Hi, I'm Marcus Hutzel. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about two of the major problems that I see in live and recorded audio. And these two problems go hand in hand with overall gain structure, and they can cause a lot of problems, mainly in terms of noise and how much noise ends up in your final product. And those problems are, number one, not properly gaining your inputs. That is, most of the time, people don't gain their inputs enough. And number two, not paying attention to your final audio destination, which for live audio production is either an amp and a passive speaker or a powered speaker or some other audio input on anything from a camera to a record deck or a feed to another room. And if you don't take all of the components into your system into account, you're doing your system and your skills a disservice because I guarantee you, you're going to end up with noisier audio and your audio console and its internal processors like EQs, compressors, auto mixers, may not work as designed, and that could ruin your show real quick. But for the most part, in this video, I'm going to talk about gain structure and how it absolutely affects noise. And I'm going to demonstrate this a little bit later in this video. And I'll kind of do this video in two parts, lecture and demonstration. So first, the lecture. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you've hopefully seen me talk about the two main goals and challenges with audio, and that's avoiding distortion and clipping and limiting noise in your audio signal chain. So to expand on this issue I see on a daily basis out there in the workforce, I see a lot of live audio engineers, at least in the city and industry that I'm in, almost completely ignoring proper gain structure. The biggest mistake I see is usually coming into a space with audio gear, mostly when that system is going to be amplified in a room. And a lot of live engineers follow this method or school of thought. And yes, I'm using a lot of air quotes because... I don't think what I'm about to talk about or describe is really a school of thought. I think it's bad gain structure and bad habits getting passed down, and it's ruining a lot of audio. And that method is turning on your amps or speakers to some arbitrary level, sometimes all the way up, setting your faders at zero on your console, and then gaining your inputs from there to make it sound loud enough in the room. And yes, I put gain in quotes there because doing it this way is truly improper because it ignores the primary goal of your preamp, which is to gain your mics up to line level for your console. That is the only reason that preamps exist. And if we gain low, we almost always introduce more noise further down the signal chain. So our microphones generally send microphone level audio signals or microphone level AC voltage from the mic down the cable to the mixing console. That's why it's called mic level. Usually it's coming from a microphone. But our audio consoles and audio equipment are designed to operate best with line level audio running through its components. So the only way to amplify our microphone's low level mic input to line level is with a preamp. That's the only reason the preamps are there, to gain this up to line level. And most often what happens is that this incorrect method or school of thought of turning on your speakers and amps then setting your faders at zero and then attempting to set your gain leads to most often barely having any input gain on your incoming signals. I see so many input meters on analog and digital audio consoles only peaking around negative 30 dBU or negative 40 or even negative 60 dBFS. Signals so low they barely register a single LED on the meter bridge at times. Doing it this way is working backwards from the speaker and that's just improper. Never work backwards. Gain structure works its way forward from the sound source to the destination. And if you're not paying attention to your input meters and giving your inputs a healthy amount of gain on the visual input meter, then you're just not operating your audio equipment properly. Gaining with your ears isn't gain. Gain is there to amplify our mics up to a level that our console wants. I hope I've made that apparent. Gain this up to line level. That's our job. So gain with your eyes while watching the meters but obviously verify with your ears that things sound good. It's a verification process, eyes and ears when working audio. And the reason we need to pay attention to every input is that the rest of the console's internal components may not respond as designed like EQs, compressors, auto mixers, bus sends, etc. And the other result of gaining inputs low is that your signals are now closer to the noise floor of the console. And if that's what you send through your console and out of your console, a low level voltage that's close to the noise floor, you'll have to amplify that low level signal at the endpoint, be it a speaker, an amplifier, or a record deck, or a camera. And then you'll be amplifying all that noise with it. 
a lot of engineers end up making this mistake because they want good fader positions. That is, they want their faders around that zero dBU mark on their console. And yes, that's a good position to be in, but you shouldn't sacrifice input gain at the preamp for output volume coming out of your speakers. Your faders and your amplifier inputs are there for volume adjustments, not your gain knobs. You should find somewhere else downstream to turn it down so that your input gain can be where it needs to be to give your console enough gain or voltage for it to actually act upon your signal properly and so your signals will be as far above your noise floor as possible. Never sacrifice proper input gain for volume in your room. Now, this method of wanting good fader position can be done properly, but rarely is. You can have strong input gains, you can have good fader positions, and you can have proper volume at the outputs and your speakers, but most people don't employ it well and end up completely ignoring and sacrificing their input gains. And almost every time having their input gains far too low for proper processing and far too low to have clean audio. Our audio equipment has visual meters for a reason. The meters are there to tell us how much signal is coming into or going out of a particular point in our audio signal chain. It's our job to listen with our ears, but again, verify and structure our electronic signals with our eyes with our audio meters. And I don't know about you, but my ears can't hear voltage. They can hear distortion, so that's something to listen for, but they can't really hear voltage. That's what the meters are there for. We need to use the meters to see our audio. Now, the proper way to gain structure your system is to work your way forward through the system, starting at the sound source and then your preamp, making sure most of your inputs are hitting somewhere around zero dBU or around negative 12 to 16 dBFS on dBFS meters, basically gaining up as much as you can without clipping while leaving some headroom, of course, for your sound sources to get louder. Gain structure your console first. Then, once the input is gained up appropriately, again, with the amps and speakers off, push the faders up to get the signals routed to the outputs and the amps and speakers, etc., and then adjust the amplifiers or the powered speakers inputs after signal is being sent to them from the console, and only turn them up as much as you need to for that space, that system, and that show, again with appropriate headroom in case you need to turn up louder at the mixer. You have to account for all of those variables. Why? Because that's how the equipment is designed to work, this method will induce less noise into your audio, and because that's our job as audio operators and engineers, to give the audio console what it wants and what it needs to do its job, and to produce audio with as little noise as possible. And we accomplish this by working our way through the equipment from sound source to destination and never in reverse, ensuring strong gain and audio levels through every single point in the chain. You have to encompass all of the components in your system. You have to consider amplifiers and speakers, record decks, feeds to cameras. You have to consider all of that because it's a system. Whether it's temporary or permanent, it's part of a system that you're setting up and need to not only amplify, but send clean audio through that system. It's an audio system, not just individual and disjointed pieces. So you always need to be watching your input meters on your audio console. It's the first line of defense in ensuring your equipment works as designed and it's your primary defense against noise. And I want clean audio. And gaining low and amplifying that signal in a large room, you may not hear the noise because of ambient environmental noise or the noise of your audience and a lot of people in the room, but that doesn't mean you should practice poor gain structure. And in today's world of live streaming, virtual meetings and recordings, when your improper gain structure leads to noisier audio, that noise is going to be heard in those recordings and on those live streams. And I think all of our audiences deserve good, clean audio. So that's the lecture part. And although I was going to just include all of the demonstrations and tests at the end of this video, the edit got kind of long. I thought I'd give you a break. We'll call this video part one, the lecture, and then you can move on to part two, the demonstration. Go get yourself some popcorn, a soda pop, or whatever you want come back and watch part two. I really think the tests will show you the differences of gain staging different ways and the, uh, in my opinion, negative results of gain staging improperly. Anyway, that's enough for now. Please let me know down below in the comments if you've learned anything from this lecture series. Watch the next part and uh, I'll see you there.